Here we are in 365 Sports. This 5 o'clock hour is John McClain, Hall of Fame columnist, joins Craig, Paul, David Smoke, and you on our show on Tuesdays, usually around 530. John, thank you very much for your time. I cannot tell you where I saw this. I just remember I saw this note that touchdowns in the NFL through, and there might have been still like the Sunday night game and Monday night game, were down an enormous amount of how many touchdowns were scored. You saw the, what was it, 13 field goals in the Giants at Washington game. Is that something that is concerning the NFL? I think it's way too early to concern the NFL. Uh, a lot of that has to do with all the young quarterbacks who are playing, not just rookies, but inexperienced guys who are like in their second and third years getting a chance to play. Uh, passing touchdowns are down. Rushing touchdowns are up. I think some of that is a byproduct of not being able to uh, hit anybody in the off season, tackle anybody, not playing people in the preseason. I think things will get better. What I'm stunned about are like the kickers. Jaime Fairbairn, who's a kicker with the Texans in his eighth season, is the first kicker in NFL history to have five 50-plus field goals in consecutive games, and he's got six. Hmm. And he looks like he can connect from 65 yards because the ones that he's kicking hit the back of the net. And so um, 50-yard field goals are up. I think they trust their kickers more than they have. And uh, it would have been a good time for the people that tried to make a suggestion a few years ago and they were shut down that a chip shot field goal should count one point. And if you hit a 50 50 Yarder, maybe it should count five or six because teams would be piling up points. But those that great kicking going on right now is amazing to me. I'm writing a column about Kanye Fairbairn and where is this coming from that he has all this kicker's distance to go with his accuracy. John, uh, the Texans with a nice win over the Bears, nineteen to thirteen, to move to two and zero oh is. Cool to see the first of what will probably be many matchups between young stars like C.J. Stroud and Caleb Williams. And I wondered your impressions on that, but a big takeaway I had from this game is, my goodness, Jalen Petrie's out there hitting some people. He was hitting some people, and and one of the things D'Amico Ryans is really emphasized in his second season is when you play us, you're going to feel it. And uh, Petrie led the hit parade. In this game, I don't know if Jalen, at his size, can keep that up. The boy took advantage of the opportunity, and it helped that they were playing against a rookie quarterback who looked lost, like a deer caught in the headlights. Now they're going to Minnesota, and they've never beaten the Vikings in their history, playing against Sam Darnold, a veteran quarterback, who I'm guessing will not put his people out to dry with the way he throws balls. But, boy, D'Amico Ryans was eating it up, what Jalen Petrie did. And, of course, Jalen Petrie was eating it up in what his Baylor Bears did to Air Force in the second half Saturday night. Well, they they took care of their business, yeah. Yes, they did. Now, for as entertaining as that was and and getting the win and all that, uh, how much of a blow is the Joe Mixon injury, John? Well, he came back in the game, Greg, so we don't know if he's going to be out or not. Cam Akers, their third team running back, had to play because Damian Pierce, the backup, was hurt, not active. Then Mixon went out, and Akers had an inexcusable turnover. Texans are winning 19 to 10, first and goal on the four yard line. And what they showed later that's getting a lot of attention here they missed a face mask where a guy in the scrum grabbed his face mask, pulled it down, and they knocked the ball out, which was smart because they got away with it. So a game that should have been 20, let's see, 26 to to uh, 10 turned out to be 19 to 13. And all those people that bet the Texans in six and a half, and it was six, man, I felt bad for them. And I'm thinking, I'm so glad I don't bet. And uh, But, yes, they're 2-0. and oh. They've let two opponents play closer than they should have. And they're going to Minnesota, two and a half point favorites. And uh, – they they need that defense to keep playing the way it did. I've never seen a team have 36 pressures on 81.2 percent of the dropbacks, and on 36 pressures of Caleb Williams, 17 combined 
with Will Anderson Jr. and Daniel Hunter, their defensive ends. I've just never seen that. And uh, and I felt I felt bad for Caleb Williams because he took a beating. Yeah, he, he did. Were the Cowboys exposed or the Saints just a heck of a lot better than people thought? Last season, the Saints were 9-8. and eight. They tied Tampa Bay for first place in the in the NFC North. The Bucs went to the playoffs on a tiebreaker. The Saints, I believe, were plus 65 in point differential. But Dennis Allen, the head coach, who's a former defensive coordinator, he hired Clint Kubiak, Gary's son. The Texans were trying to add him to the staff here. Clint went there. Clint's been a coordinator before, but he didn't get the call play. So they, Dennis Allen said, it's your baby. So they go from using the least amount of motion in the NFL to using the most through two games. And I thought there wasn't any big deal when they beat the Panthers because the Panthers may be one of the worst teams ever, White Sox of the NFL. But then to go into Arlington and do that to them, especially in the first half, is unbelievable. I texted Gary Gibby, I and I said, you may be – a quarterback coach next year if you're lucky enough to get the offer from your son. And Clint Kubiak is going to be the hot name on assistant coaches because I think their defense is good. they got to run the ball, and the offense is much more sophisticated. John, if you had to say right now, is does Tua play another game in the NFL? Absolutely. Tua Tungvalu will play. He's already said he wants to play as a football player. Everybody thinks they know what's best for him. They don't have a clue. Uh, there are different kinds of concussions. And he's already he'll play. He'll come back. He, he had a really stupid play to get hurt, to lead with his head. He didn't do that last year. But he was frustrated. He played terribly. He had a pick six, other interceptions. But he won't make that mistake again. I did a, 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 a charity event with five former players. Player, four former players and one coach, Wade Phillips. The players were Robert Brazil, Hall of Fame, Ken Houston, Hall of Fame, uh, Dan Pastorini, and then Dan Wynn. And those guys, they've got especially Brazil, Houston, and Pastorini. There was no such thing as a concussion. You know, you see they're holding up one finger, you see two, they say, okay, go back in. Every one of them have their faculties, they can talk. They can think. It doesn't mean it's guaranteed. And every one of them, when I asked them about, you see things like Tua Tungvaluwa, everyone said they would do it exactly the same way, even when it was like, it, it was wild and crazy because there were very few rules back then. So, yes, he's a player. He will return. John, uh, Bryce Young getting benched. Your thoughts on that? And also, it's it's Houston-related, right? Because he goes right before C.J. Stroud and the Texans get their guy, and they're very happy about it. But uh, what do you make of this, and what does this do, you think, moving forward for Carolina and also Bryce Young? Craig, that, that decision by the Panthers that people say was made by the owner, David Tepper, we'll never know for sure. He's the worst owner in NFL, maybe the worst in sports. And uh, just like they think this benching is because of Tepper, a new coach, Dave Canales, who's brought in to fix Bryce Young, doesn't bench your guy. You've been with him through the off-season program. You've been through the training camp. You've been through preseason. You don't do it. Now, he's not playing well. He doesn't have a lot of talent around him. It's going to be one of the worst trades in history, just like the Deshaun Watson trades, one of the worst in history. But uh, they've done him a disservice. Three head coaches already. It's a disservice to him. Let him watch and learn. Let Andy Dalton take the beating. Dalton will play well. They'll score some points. But Bryce Young will return. Fortunately for them, they've got their first pick, which should be first overall. And then they don't have their two. That still belongs to the Bears. So it's just unbelievable the way that team has gone down the toilet since David Tepper bought it in 2018. John, last thing for you. We appreciate you as always. Is the kickoff change something that's working? And um, your thoughts about it? It's different strategy. Nobody's brought something out where we go, wow, I can't believe they did that. And uh, maybe they will. They're kind of feeling each other out. 
I don't think it makes a whole lot of difference. Some of them are kicking in the end zone and letting the opponent start at the 30. Others, like the Texans, are trying to keep it, kick it high and keep them inside the 30. And I think it'll be just an ongoing process. And good luck to those fighting Baylor Bears. I want them to beat the Deons so bad. And uh, good luck and second Bears. Thank you, John. John McClain with us, 365 Sports, the Hall of Famer.